Tom Hegarty, I'm Director of Roll7. I'm John Ribbins and I'm Creative Director at Roll7. My name's Simon Bennett, I'm the Studio Director at Roll7. So Laser League is the light speed, high octane contact sport of 2150. The idea is to turn on laser beams that rotate and vaporise your opponents. And you score points by vaporising everybody on the other team before your team vaporised. You do that by hitting and activating laser nodes and they will activate in your colour. If your opposing team get the laser node before you, that activates in their colour. You need to avoid their lasers and they need to avoid your lasers. And on top of that, there's different classes as well and they can interact with the lasers and the opponents differently. So we've got three offensive classes, Blade, Smash and Shock. Then we've got two defensive classes or medic classes with Thief and Ghost. And then we've got one sort of mixed ability use, uh, which is Snipe. Blade literally has a whopping great blade attached to his arm. And Blade has a dash attack, and if you hit an opponent, you slash them and kill them, uh, and they're eliminated. Blade is balanced by a slightly longer cooldown and a slightly shorter dash, but very deadly if you can get it right. Smash has a massive kind of riot shield, uh, and he uses it to bash opponents. And that will send them flying and tumbling across the pitch ideally into one of your lasers to eliminate them or to just knock them out of the game temporarily. And obviously because he's got a dash, he can use that uh, as a speed boost as well. So if, you're, you know, if the opponent's running to turn a laser on, you can use that instead of offensively hitting someone, you can also use it to dash in and grab a laser. You've got shock. Shock has an area of effect. Once it's activated, anyone within that area is stunned and drops to the floor. On arenas with like fast moving lasers, you can stun an opponent and then while they're downed, one of your lasers is gonna sweep through and wipe them out. Um, but he can also use it as a deterrent. Right? If you're trying to revive one of your teammates, you can activate your ability as you run in for the revive and other people can't get you because you're surrounded by electricity. Thief is a defensive and offensive class in the same mold, so you can actually steal the other team's lasers as long as you use your area of effect where the laser node spawns. He has a very long recharge on his ability, uh, so you kind of need to stay out of danger for longer, um, but Thief's incredibly powerful. You can turn the tables in a point. There are also some deeper mechanics. You can play Thief offensively. We've seen uh, recently some testers uh, actually playing it as an offensive class, but I'm not gonna tell you how you do that. You'll have to discover it for yourself. Uh, you've got Ghost. Ghost is a, a medic class, um, so particularly good if you're in a 3v3 and a 4v4 and your teammates are down, you can use your ability to actually go through opponent's lasers. You've got a limited period of time in which you're essentially invulnerable. But he can also use that kind of as like a, a safety net to reduce the risk. So again, like if he's running towards a laser and there's an opponent running as well, he can activate his ability. And even if the other person gets there first, he won't be eliminated because he's just passes through. So Snipe is another offensive class but can also be really helped to control the map and control the game. So essentially you drop a marker and then from there you draw a line. If anyone crosses that line and you're quick enough, you can teleport back to your marker and anyone on that line is eliminated. So I could drop my marker at a really important laser or a really important power-up collection point and I can run away and do some other stuff and when that power-up or that node appears, I can teleport back and grab it and not really worry about eliminating other people. Or I could use it to defend something, right? If I don't want someone to collect a power-up, I can drop my line and put this line as a sort of barrier between uh, the power-up and the opposing team. Uh, each class uh, also has modifiers that can kind of adapt and change the ability and again, these are really important to balance your team. Uh, to give you an example, the shock character, he has an area of effect attack and it stuns other players and knocks them down. Um, you can choose to play that in two different ways uh, with the modifiers. So one modifier allows you to have the ability on for longer, or I can play it using uh, the stun modifier, and the stun modifier means that the people I do take out, they remain down and on the floor for longer than they would with the other one. Um, so obviously I'm playing with a blade, the offensive character, uh, and I'm a shock. Picking stun allows me to knock people down and give that blade player a much longer time to run up and take that player out. Uh, whereas maybe if I'm playing more of a medic class as shock, I might want to extend so I can have my ability on for longer and be protected from attack for a longer time while I go and try and revive other players. So within each map, there is a set series of power-ups which change up the play at any given moment. There's a set of power-ups that will change the motion of the lasers. So you've got like rewind and pause and speed up, which kind of do obvious things. Like if you hit a pause and someone's in between a bunch of beams, you can 
trap them in a certain spot and your offensive players can come in and take them out. You don't always necessarily want to collect all the power-ups that are on the pitch. So uh, we have a power-up called Switch. And so that one's quite an interesting one, right? Because if you're the winning team, you don't want to collect that power-up because it will turn all your lasers to the enemy team's colour. And then kind of the last set affects the players directly. So you've got power-ups that can recharge all, your, all of your team's abilities back to full. And you've got power-ups that do the same thing to the other team and drain all of their abilities to zero. So they've got to like recharge all their abilities again. And then other stuff like giving everybody a shield like that, where you can revive all the dead players on your team. And again, part of the skill is for you as a player to understand and remember what power-ups are coming up. And that may actually affect some of your play beforehand. Laser League is played all over the world in these vast futuristic stadiums with like crazy crowds going absolutely mental. Um, and each stadium has a series of different maps which change up how you play the game. You know, some maps are focused around area control, some are much more twitchy, some are much more uh, open um, and so lend themselves better to like offensive character classes and things like that. Um, so while it's not necessarily a different specific game mode, um, the actual patterns and configurations of uh, lasers that you'll get in each stadium are different. And it, it really is these maps that you need to learn and each map will require a different class setup or different class setups will enable you to play these maps differently. So to become the ultimate Laser League player, initially you're going to need some pretty good Twitch skills, but ultimately you're going to need to understand the depth of the game uh, and really delve into that team-based strategy. If you want to register for any of the betas, get yourself onto www.laserleaguegame.com. If you want to join in the conversation, uh, get over to the Steam forums. And yeah, please follow us on social media. Thank you.